Hello, my name is Maria Miller from MathMammoth.com. In this video, we're going to look into comparing fractions. Now, first I have here some easy cases, so to speak, where you can easily compare the two fractions and find out which one is bigger or more. For example, if we have 2 eighths and 3 eighths, obviously 3 eighths is more. You can see it in the picture, plus you can see it that there's more of the pieces. All you have to remember is that if there are eighths and eighths, it's like the same size pieces. All you do is compare how many pieces there are. So comparing like fractions, the fractions with the same kind of pieces, is easy. Here's another type of situation. We have the same amount of pieces, four pieces and four pieces. But it is still easy to compare because we know that ninths are bigger pieces than tenths. And children need to learn this principle that uh, they cannot look at this number 10 as making this fraction bigger. They instead have to think that, okay, there are less ninths uh, making a whole pie. You know, nine ninths makes a whole pie, and then if you divide the same pie into tenths, each piece is smaller. So tenths are smaller than ninths. So this is more. And it might be easily visible. It might be visible from the pictures too. My pictures, of course, are hand-drawn, they are not super accurate here in the video. Now here's another type of easy situation where we compare to one-half. Three-sevenths is clearly less than one-half, as you can see in the picture. But even if you didn't have the pictures, you can still figure that out easily, because, you know, three-and-a-half over seven would be exactly one-half. If, if I had 3.5 over seven, that would be half equal to half. But it is 3 over 7. It is less than that. Okay? And um, let's solve these three also using these easy principles. 1 half and 7 twelfths. Okay? Now, 6 twelfths would be exactly 1 half. If you had 12 pieces and took 6 of them, then that would be exactly 1 half. But I have more than 6 twelfths. So, this is more than 1 half. Here, 6 elevenths and 6 tenths, there are the same number of pieces, 6 pieces and 6 pieces, but tenths as pieces are bigger pieces than elevenths, so this is more. Here, actually, none of these principles work as such, but most of us can easily visualize in our mind that one-fifth is just a little, not very much, you know, one-fifth, and six-ninths is way more than one-half, so it is obviously much more. Okay, this exercise has to do with fractions on a number line. And our task is to order these three fractions from smallest to greatest. And here too, these three from smallest to the greatest. We're going to use these three number lines to help us. This first number line goes from 0 to 1, and it is divided into three parts. First part, second part, and third part. So therefore, from here to here, this much, is one third, right? This from here to here is two thirds, and there's three thirds. And similarly here, this number line is divided into five parts. Here's the first part, second part, third part, etc. And so from here to here is one fifth. From here to here, this much is two fifths, and so on. And the last one is divided into eight parts. So it has eighths, one eighth, two eighths, and so on. So I'll just find three eighths here. Three eighths would be this much, this long. One third would be from here to here, and two fifths would be from here to here. And now I can see which fraction is the greatest, or smallest, or greatest, okay? By comparing the lengths of these lines I drew. This one here is the shortest one, one third. So it is the smallest. And then comes this one, 3 eighths, and lastly 2 fifths is the greatest. Now similarly here, I'm going to find 2 thirds, it's this mark here, 2 thirds would be this much, 5 eighths would be this long a line, and then 3 fifths up till here. And now 3 fifths is the shortest. And then comes this, 5 eighths, and lastly 2 thirds. 
This is just a nice exercise, even though it doesn't really teach you any tricks as to how to compare fractions, it still helps students understand how to see fractions on a number line. Now, sometimes none of these easy tricks work for comparing fractions, but then we still have one more method to use. And that takes the most work, but that always works. It is that we will convert these fractions to be compared so that they have the same denominator. And to do that, we need to find the common denominator. Just like when adding fractions, this is the same exact method. We find a common denominator. And for 8 and 12, I'm looking at 8 and 12, I have to find a number so that 12 goes evenly into it and 8 goes evenly into it. A number that's in the multiplication table of 8 and in the multiplication table of 12. Now 24 works. Great. That's a great number. Okay. And 8 times 3 is 24, so 5 times 3 here. 15. 12 times 2, 7 times 2, 14. And now I can compare 15 pieces is more than 14 pieces. Okay, it might not be as easily visible in the picture because I chose these fractions so that they are fairly close. Here I'm going to use the common denominator of 30. Just simply 3 times 10. And now I go 3 times 10, so 1 times 10. And 10 times 3, so 3 times 3. Okay, again the fraction on this side is great. Let's do a few more of those kind. If I have two fractions here, I cannot quite tell which one is bigger. Um, here I'm going to change this to so that it has denominated 10. 5 times 2 is 10, 2 times 2 is 4. This I'm not going to change because now, as you can see, I have the same amount of parts, 4 and 4, but tenths are bigger parts than eleventh, so this is more. I could have converted both fractions so that they would have 50, 55th part also. Here I'm going to do just that, write them with the same denominator. To think about the denominator, I'll go in the multiples of 16. 16, 32, 32 is not divisible by 6, and then 48. 48 works. Okay. 3 times 16 is 48, so 3 times 13, 39. And then here, 6 times 8, so 5 times 8, 40. Okay, this one is more, slightly more. I bet you couldn't tell the difference just by looking at the fractions, so we need to use this more complicated method. And here, 9 eighths and 13 over 11. Note that these are improper fractions. I could write them as mixed numbers, but for comparing it doesn't matter. I can just use the same method as I did here. I would now have to choose my denominator as 88. 8 times 11 is 88. So 8 times 11 and then 9 times 11. And here 11 times 8, so 13 times 8, which is 80 plus 24. Okay, that fraction is more. 